All right, here we are. I'm just getting my phone up and running so that I can look at reminds. We have our test this week. Uh, first test of the first semester in honors physics. So here we are. I'm going to try to go through pretty much everything you need to know uh, for the unit five test. <clears throat> I've got my phone up and running with um, remind open. Uh, I've got the YouTube chat. I actually have it right here below me now. I'm gonna try that out again. I think I had that at the beginning of the year maybe. Um, I didn't like it, um, but we're going to try it out and see how it goes. Um, and if uh, need be, I'll put on a background so we can see. I suspect we might not be able to see. Oh, there we go. This is our favorite tool. Yeah, there. Oh, all right. I need this background. I guess I could have chosen a less glaringly yellow um, background, but it looks like it's necessary. So I'll keep it on there. Hey, yeah, good. Yeah, I'm your favorite because I help you get good grades, right? So that's my job. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to try to do. <clears throat> so here we go. Remember, there is well, a couple of things. One, there's a delay. I might not see your question right away if it's on the YouTube chat. I'll see it if it's, a, I'm going to keep looking in this direction because that's where my phone's at. So um, in fact, I'm going to silence it because I'll get the notifications. If you have Remind, it'll go probably faster that way. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, and otherwise, yeah, just let me know if you got any questions. I went through, I made this, um, slideshow this i made this series of questions to reflect what's going to be on the actual test so it does follow closely i mean it's not like the test because <laughs> that would be kind of silly that's not like exactly how it works out but this does reflect the test so if you follow this you're going to like take the test and it is going to shuffle it of course a little bit but you know well let's get right to it um so unit 5.1 there were three parts to this unit uh the first one being the work energy uh, the work energy theorem and power. Uh, so if you happen to remember, uh, one of the best things you could do is take a look at the equation sheet because uh, that really just kind of helps you, um, <clears throat> I guess, you know, let me just get rid of this. It, it helps you kind of uh, think through things a little bit. And so what I'm going to focus on first are going to be these three equations. If you remember, those are the first equations that I talked about um, back in January. Uh, when we started talking about work and power. Um, so, in the, you know, just remember W is for work. We got force times displacement. Displacement, I've been saying distance a lot, but displacement really emphasizes the fact that you have to go from point A to point B. You can't just like be holding it a certain distance. You have to actually have some motion. You actually have to go, there actually has to be a displacement. And then power is work divided by time. So, you know, if, if work is not given to you, you might actually have to calculate it force times displacement, and then divide by time. And then work is equal to the change in energy. If you remember that, so like if, if something does change energy, uh, that <clears throat> the def that's the definition of work being done. So yeah, all right. So like when in doubt, look at the equations that might help you with what you might be struggling with. So let's take a look at this question. Which of these is the greatest rate of power? So I'm just jumping straight into power here. And uh, because uh, when it comes down to it, they're, they're rather simple um, equations. And so, um, wow, <laughs> well, let's find out, right? So power, okay, so I'm gonna write that out. Power is work divided by time. Uh, and then work is just force times that displacement. Uh oh, yeah, well, we'll see, right? So we do got to work it out for all of them. I mean, you don't want to like you don't want to see a question like this on a test and then just kind of guess at it. I'm not saying you're right or wrong. I'm just saying like work out each one. That's that's my tip to you. Um, pushing a box with so 15 newtons for uh, 15 meters for five seconds. So basically, what that comes down to is work is going to be uh, the 15 newtons times the 15 seconds. Um, and then dividing that by five seconds. Okay, so when I do that, uh, let's see, I could turn on my, I don't need to turn on my calculator. You know what, let's turn on my calculator. Um, I got a little bit of a sniffle, so I apologize about that. Uh, where did it go? Uh, I am so prepared here. Oh, there it is, boink, there's my calculator. All right, so uh, let's see, not that answer. So 15 <clears throat> times 15. And, and one thing I really need to emphasize again is getting used to using whatever calculator you're going to use on the test. I think the time has passed perhaps for that. Um, but what 
I say? 45. So uh, th that is going to be uh, for a second. It's not 15 seconds. It's 15 meters. Uh, so that's going to be 45. And the unit for that is uh, Newton meters per second or watts. And then, so, okay, we got 45. Uh, 20 Newtons, 10 meters, 10 seconds. Um, okay, now I'm going to do a quick trick here. So 20 Newtons times 10 meters divided by 10 seconds. I mean, so the, the, the tens are going to cancel out. This is going to be, this is going to be 20 watts. All right, you can check my work on that. I'm pretty sure that's how math works, but I've been wrong before. Um, now, maybe you don't take, like, just take the extra five seconds to um, to do it in the calculator, right? Um, oh, hey, what? Did you somehow delete your chat? All right. Um, nice. I did not actually know that could be done. So, very cool. Um, I mean, what, what chat? So, all right. Pulling a box with um, 30 Newtons. So this is, you know, let me just underline these. So those are, so 30 Newtons, uh, five meters over five seconds. Hey, another one that just sort of cancels out. So that's gonna be 30 Watts, all right? And finally holding, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> holding a 80 Newton ball in your hand for 20 seconds. All right, whenever you see the word holding or something implies that it's not moving immediately, you know that the work is going to be zero, all right? Because there's no displacement. And so whenever you have no displacement, zero times force, you know, it's going to be zero. So so 30 and zero, well, actually, it's also going to be the power because power, zero divided by anything is power. Okay, so reemphasize holding. You're going to see that. You're going to see some, some form of it's not moving. And so whenever you see that, it's the work is zero. It, it, there's a question or two like that. And the, the whole point of that question is to see, are you paying attention that you have to have a displacement? You have to have some movement, some motion. All right. So looks so with the answer is whatever it's going to be the greatest. So 45, 20 versus 30. looks like A is our answer. All right. So slow me down if uh, you got questions, but this is sort of a crash course of the entire unit, which we started, like I said, in January. Um, so a kid standing on top of a 19 meter hill has 10,536 joules of potential energy. How much work did he do to get to the top of the hill? All right. Now you might start throwing these numbers into calculators and doing all sorts of division or multiplication until you get an answer that matches. And sadly and unfortunately and possibly unfairly, not really, but you might actually get an answer that matches one of the questions or one of the one of the options. And if you did any of that, you're gonna be wrong um, because it's asking how much work did he do? So once again, take a moment, look at the equation sheet. Just remind yourself when you're taking your test, you don't know everything. You don't know everything, all right? And, um, or at least you do, but you, it's good to be reminded of things. You, we all forget stuff, all right? Now, the question is, okay, how much work did you do to get to the top of the hill? So, okay, great answer. Since he's not moving, he is currently not doing work. Currently not doing work. But it does say this in the past tense, right? So how much work did he do to get to the top of the hill? And I maybe am over explaining it. And which is why you might be overthinking it. Uh, and I do appreciate So don't erase those answers because those are legit answers. And, you know, right. So the kid is standing still. So you might have thought that. But see, that's a trick question a little bit. That's a trick answer because how much work did he do to get there? And the fact is the kid now has 10,536 joules of energy. How much work did they have to do to get there? Well, work is equal to the change in energy. All right. So what's the answer? It's going to be B. All right. So once again, just double check yourself. Wait, what is work? The kid is currently standing still. So your answer is like you, you're not you're not wrong. Well, you're wrong in this situation, but you're right. How much work is he currently doing? None. None. And that kind of goes along with the previous thing. I mean, that's the point. He's standing there. He's not moving. Um, so but how much work did he do? Well, that's how much energy he's got. So that's how much energy he had to do to get up there. All right. So, 
I mean, if you really want to erase your chat, you can. But I mean, you you had a legit mm, line of thinking, and so I don't want to negate that. I want you know I want you to learn from that. Everybody too. I mean, all right. So, like I said, let me know if you got questions. Let me know if this doesn't make sense. Hopefully, it does help. Okay. So, which of the following are true about energy? Well, let's just go through and check to see if they're true or not, right? Uh, it is the ability to do work. Okay, that's true. Uh, I've There's more. Uh, it doesn't say choose all that apply, but I'm like literally quizzing myself live in front of you. So I didn't need to say that. <laughs> uh, on the test, it might say like choose all that apply. Um, it can slow something down. Yeah. Uh, if you have energy, uh, if you're taking away energy, um, it can slow something down. Sure. Um, ooh, ooh, keep going. E is, e is well, yep, it can change forms. It can. Uh, it can cause an acceleration. Yes. Uh, energy can cause or work. I mean, it's kind of like a similar idea here. Uh, it always causes an acceleration. Wait a minute. Mm, no, because you could have constant speed. You really could. Okay. So you could have constant speed. You don't have to have an acceleration. It can cause an acceleration. Yeah, it could speed things up. In fact, that's like energy. I mean, it, this is this is like this is definitely ripe for overthinking here. Um, what does energy do? <laughs> uh, it can result in a constant speed. All right, i.e., y d was not an option. It can be stored. All right, looks like we got a lot of these. So basically, all of these are true about energy. Um, it, it's just the ability. Letter A is the definition, and all of the rest kind of flow from that. All right. Good. Yes, F as well. All right. You're doing good. We're doing good. We're doing good. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. More, more, more. Oh, what is this? Ah. All right. A five, the 500 Newton box is pushed up a three meter ramp that is 25 meter, uh, whoa, 25 degrees from the ground. So I guess this is going to be our theta. You're like, wait, what? Theta? Hang on. Don't, don't go to work. Uh, for there, so the, it is in the truck 1.2 meters off the ground. How much work was done against gravity to get to the top? All right, now, don't freak out here. We did do angles first semester, but the specific the question is specifically asking how much work was done against gravity. It is going to be a okay, because gravity. <clears throat> I mean, we're not we never talked about inclined planes and all that and, and simple machines in this class, but you can use an inclined plane. It's it's a simple machine to help you do work. Um, and the, the, the point is this, it's getting up to a height. It is being lifted uh, 1.2 meters up off the ground. And the fact that it's going at an angle is just like walking up the stairs. I mean, the point of going up the stairs is not to walk diagonally. The point of going up the stairs is to get up higher. Um, it just having an incline makes it easier. Um, and no, you were right. It is a... Um, so the point is though, um, we don't talk about angles, so don't worry about angles here. All right. Uh, it's done against gravity. Gravity pulls straight down. All right. That's, that's the point. <clears throat> so, all right. All right. Okay. Which of these is not considered work? The car using its brakes to slow a stop, holy cow, to slow to a stop. All right, that is considered work. That's negative work. Um, so, yeah, good, the answer is gonna be D, so spoiler. The wind blowing a plastic bag around the neighborhood. All right, yeah, that's work. There's a force and a displacement, um, as unsightly as it may be. Carrying your backpack up the stairs on your back. Yeah, you're moving upward. You're moving upward to, you're, 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 you're going up. Holding the phone in your hand. All right, there's that keyword. It might be holding. In fact, that's probably the most po um, common um, word to use here. I've used it twice now. I don't know if I meant to, but the idea is that you're holding your phone in your hand. No matter how heavy things get, if you're just holding it, uh, you're not doing work. All right, so if it's not moving, no work. But you can have negative work. That's, that's sort of the point of uh, letter A here. You can have negative work. It is Removing energy from the system, removing energy from the car to slow it down. All right. Hey, look at that. Wait, unit five. Mm, 
0.1. And any questions about that part? And you can put them in there and type them up. There's a slight delay, 10 or 15 seconds, um, and I'll see and I can come back to it. All right. Yeah, I got answers, I hope. Um, so, meanwhile, I'll just decorate the. Well, as good as it's going to get. Yeah. Um, that question. All right, you type away. Um, hey, hey, what? All right, let's keep these. Whoa, all right, um, yeah, I uh, put the exam. How do we find the speed, not velocity? Um, well, honestly, if it's asking for speed, well, that's weird. Uh, if it's asking for speed, it, use V. Use the equation to find velocity. It's gonna be the same idea. So um, that's how you do it, so. For some reason, this thing skipped all the way to the end, and that's why it stopped. So I apologize about that. There, it just did it again. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah. So I apologize. I'm technical issues for the exam study guide. How do we find the speed, uh, not the velocity? Well, like I said, um, yeah, you 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 just solve for velocity. I think I might be hitting one of those in this coming um, this coming uh, section here. So let me just uh, see if I could find the review guide really quick. Um, it, energy review, energy review answers, energy review 19. All right, well, I'll pull up the one with the answers. Oh, just, all right, yeah, so does that help? Um, let, let me see if I can answer the question and then if I don't answer the question, then you could ask it again and tell me I didn't answer the question if that makes sense. So. Uh, to self for speed. If it's asking for speed, I suspect it's just asking for for, velo for velocity without the direction. Um, but it's going to take me like a, a hot minute to open up the document, and I don't. Um, it's not really good. Make good streaming, you know. But I'll I'll find it really quick actually. So, um, five point okay. I'm, I'm looking for it because I want to make sure that I answered your question, Sam. So I guess intermission here. Let's see, should have had this open earlier. There it is. All right. I don't know if there was a specific question you were like looking for. Uh, if you if there is, let me know. Um, and I'll and I'll pull up the review guide and I'll tell you what. Yeah, if that if that's the case, let me know and I'll I'll pull up the review guide and I'll talk about it. Um, but for now, I'll just go back into this <clears throat> more general stuff. That that's the other thing. If you got a question on the review guide, you want me to take take a look at it over. Um, during this review, um, let me know and I could definitely address it. All right. So 18D, all right, there you go. That's what I like to see, specific direction. So let's take a look. Why did not world? Did I open up the wrong one? I did. Great, Mr. Jern, you're such a professional. Um, let's see. All right, let's do this one more time. One more time. Practice, energy review, answers. Nope, just, there we go. All right, 18 D. All right. <clears throat> 18, ooh. Yes, okay, great. The speed of the car, yes. So for this one, it says speed. Uh, that is definitely just asking for velocity. And I do have a question that's gonna be similar to this um, that I'm gonna talk about in a moment or in a couple moments. Uh, so if that helps you, if that doesn't help you, let me know and I can go back to specifically that, that question because I got one that's very similar. Um, it might not happen until not uh, the 5.3 section though. So I will, I will get to that, all right? I promise. And like I said, if I don't answer it or it doesn't help, I will answer that question specifically for you. All right, so step, taking a step back before we get to that one, uh, what can what can be changed? So we're talking about the types of energy, 5.2. I've got the unit divided up. I, I kind of like to approach it. I feel like it's just easier to study this way. It all definitely blends together, of course. Um, but okay, let's take a look. What can be changed but in order to directly affect the gravitational potential of uh, energy of an object? Mass and height, that is correct. So why is that? Well, again, uh, we are in the this next thing, and so let's take a look at our equations. This is going to really focus on these equations here, these uh, these uh, these three, 
Uh, and actually a little bit of that fourth one too, because that's going to be, it's not an energy equation, but it's all about springs. But right, so elastic or gravitational potential energy is mass times gravity times height. So what can you do to increase it? Uh, well, aside from moving to another planet uh, and changing the gravity, which you can't, uh, mass and height are going to be your answers. Fantastic. All right, mass and height. So what is that, A and B? All right, mass and height. Great. All right, nice and straightforward, right? All right, these types of questions, let's read it. A car triples its speed from 10 miles per hour to 30 miles an hour. What happens to its kinetic energy? Right, well, right away, you know it's not going to stay the same. I don't even need to, how do we do this? Well, kinetic energy, kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. Okay, so what you got to do is look at that equation and we are changing its speed, its velocity, whoop, this thing right there, uh, we're tripling it, we're tripling the speed, we're going from 10 to 30 miles an hour. Whatever happens to the velocity gets squared, all right? So if we tripled the velocity, that means, so triple means three, it's three times as much, which means that three squared is gonna be nine, so the answer is gonna be nine times what it was, all right? And there was a couple of questions originally. I don't know if there's any in this review guide for the for the for the study guide for those tests, but uh, one of the uh, one of the many practices I gave you actually had you calculate out um, the energies for two different cars, and they ended up being they're going twice. One was going twice as fast as the other, and then when you calculated out the energy, it ended up being four times as much energy because if it was going twice as fast, that's uh, that would be so two squared is four times as much if it's going three times as fast it's going to be nine times as much energy if it goes four times as, much, as fast it'll be 16 times the energy if it goes five times as fast it'll be 25 times the energy so whatever whatever happens to the speed hap it, you you square it it's an exponential relationship all right now, if you're ever not sure about these types of questions, one like surefire but slower method is to just make up some numbers. Like I could just say, all right, well, I'm gonna make up a mass of a thousand kilograms for this car uh, and totally made up. And then you could say, all right, 10, um, I mean, miles per hour, I guess. It's, it's kind of silly, we'll, we'll get rid of the units. And then you could actually figure that out. And then you do the same thing for the same car. Uh, going going 30 uh, whatever's all right and basically you would find out that the amount of energy would be nine times what it is uh, and so that's how you that's how you can definitely be sure if you're ever like having one of those times where you're just second guessing yourself and you're just not sure uh, if you're right uh, that that's what you can do just make up numbers uh, so I just totally made up the thousand make it easy on yourself right so don't you know, so I just picked a thousand. All right. All right. There's a loud smile. All right. A car of mass M and a truck of mass 2M are driving next to each other at 50 miles an hour. What can be said about the kinetic energy of each vehicle? So once again, whenever it's asking about kinetic energy, it's good to have the uh, equation sheet ahead in front of you with the equations. So we are talking about mass. Mass is not squared. It's halved, but we could just forget about that half. Um, basically, if we got a mass of mm, some mass, and then we have the truck that's twice as massive, has twice the amount of mass, well, it's just a simple algebraic like linear relationship. So what that means is that the truck is gonna have twice the energy, all right? So it's different than the previous one where when you have the speed you square it in this case it's just a direct relationship all right and once again you can totally just like plug in numbers just like last time i mean if you're going to say like all right half times a thousand plus let's make the velocity nice and easy uh we'll say five all right we know five squared is 25 and if you go one half times 2m so 2000 times five squared and they're going the same speed uh, and then you're gonna get the kinetic energy is gonna be double for the for the truck. So when in doubt, plug in plug in random number not random plug in made up numbers um, that 
that fit the problem, all right? Or just look at the equation. You can see M is, there's, it's just a linear relationship, okay? Or you can just memorize it. If mass is doubled, the energy is doubled. If velocity is doubled, the energy is quadrupled. Uh, there's many ways to go about these things. <clears throat> All right, 5.2. Still, which of these springs is the most difficult to stretch? All right, now, very easy. I'll pause. I'll take a sip of water if you want to pop an answer in there, but... All right. Uh, ooh, hello. Uh, let's just, yeah, we can ignore that little mishap there. Yeah, that's it. It's B, it's A, it's A because it has this highest slope. That's it. All right. The slope is, yeah, thank you. Good. It's force per extension. I mean, there's a lot of ways to say displacement, but that's how much it was stretched. Uh, so yeah, that's it. So slope is here. You know what? Slope is, um, well, Okay, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but difficult to stretch. It, it takes more force to stretch it the same distance is what it comes down to. All right, high slope means it's higher. It's harder to stretch. Which one has a higher K value? All right, well, I kind of just answered that uh, in the previous question. Slope is K, right? So if slope is K and spring A has a higher slope, guess which one has the higher K value? Well, yeah, I mean, it's A. <laughs> it's it. Okay, because I'll rewrite that what I had over earlier. Yeah, spring A, but it, choice B. Thank you. Slope is K. Uh, okay, the spring constant. So K is the spring constant. In case you need reminding of that, um, that's basically what that is. All right, so K value is the spring constant. Great. Great. Okay, now you're probably gonna see one like this where you actually have actual numbers uh, on this force versus displacement graph. Uh, and it wants to know how much energy does it take to stretch the spring 0.2 meters. You could, if you wanted to, find the slope and that will give you K and then you could do the, um, I mean, uh, what is it? PEE -E is equal to one half K D squared. You could do that. Um, that's one option. Uh, if you find the slope, that'll give you K and it tells you the distances too. That, that is totally a legit way to do it. Okay. The other way to do it is if you see a graph like this and it's asking for energy, that's the area under the line. So points two is here. And so if I basically like make a triangle of this and I find the, um, area of that um, a triangle is one half base times height and you and so one half the base uh, 0 0.2 uh, meters times the height which is at that point it looks like to be six newtons and so um, half of 0 0.2 is 0 0.1 uh, meters times six newtons and so 0.6 uh, Newton meters, which is joules. All right, that's how you do it. You find the area on the line or you can use the equation, either one, um, whatever you're more comfortable with. So if it asks for energy, area under the line. Okay. All right. Secondly, what is the K value of this spring? And so that's the funny thing is you might actually get asked the K value um of this spring and i said in the previous question that's one way to actually solve this is if you could find the k value uh that's then you just plug it into the equation okay how do you find the k value well remember what i said like a couple slides ago uh slope is k all right how do you find slope all right look at this goes to zero zero always pick zero zero if it seems like it's an option it just makes your life so much easier and then you pick another one. I'm gonna pick, um, it could be any one of these. I guess I'll just pick a slightly different one. Then yeah, I don't like that, yeah, I don't like that. I guess I'll just pick this one again, because why not? So this is 0.2 comma six, and this is zero, zero. Uh, this is my xy and xy, xy. 
Okay, and I do all that because I don't trust myself on test day because there's a lot of stuff going on and I write down X and Y because I don't want to like mix, mix this up at all because I will. I, I don't trust myself on, on test day. And so how do I find slope? Well, that's on the equation sheet. So if you're ever not sure uh, about slope, that is, where did it, where would that be? It's on the front page, isn't it? So it'll be on the front page here. Here it is right around there. That's, there you go. So you could, if you ever forget how to find slope, you just have, like I said, one of those moments, it's right there for you. So how do you do it? Okay, well, slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so y2, so these are gonna be my twos, these will be my ones, six newtons, because that's the y, y axis, minus zero. This is why choosing zero is nice and easy. Uh, point two uh, meters minus zero. And so I get six, div six newtons divided by point two meters. Um, and because I don't trust myself, I'm going to put that in the calculator, point two, yeah, th 30, right? So the answer is 30. Uh, where do we go? 30 newtons per meter. Okay, so that's gonna be my K. It's a newtons per meter, which is good because that's the unit of K. Okay, and so that's why I included the units when I was also doing my calculations. Just to ver, it's a good quick verification. If you stick with the units all throughout, I know it's a pain. I don't. I know it might not always make sense. Um, and sometimes you get like a whole mishmash of units that like boils down to something like newtons or joules, uh, but sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so there we go. All right. I lost my phone. It went off into there. looking for questions, clarifications. All right. A spring that is stretched D stores X energy. How much energy is stored if the spring is stretched 2D? Ah, all right. These are almost, yeah, <laughs> uh, currently playing Skyrim. But I don't know if that's my favorite. It's my favorite right now. Um, that's okay. I got lots of favorites. Terraria. Actually, I just played Terraria today too because um, me and my daughter play it. We've been playing it since she was little. Um, all right, anyway. So, we'll talk more about that later. Questions like this that don't actually have numbers are sometimes even more difficult than questions that do have numbers. Uh, so what I would like to do, I think, is suggest that you go like this. All right, here is the equation. I'm gonna have K D squared. It's asking how much energy it has, all right? And so this is, well, I'll get back to what it's similar to in a moment. How much energy is stored if it's stretched two times the distance? One way to do it, if this works for you, is look at it and say, hey, D, the displacement, is squared again. That means, if I remember correctly, that if whatever happens to displacement gets squared. So if I double the displacement, that's two. Two squared is four. And hey, looky here, that is an option. And that would be correct. Okay, that's like, if you're good at math, if your brain just like click, 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 and you can like, you know, think that through. Or maybe it's not as clicky, as, as fast clicking, but um, another way to do it is um, make up numbers again. So, all right, well, let's just see here. I'm gonna do one half. I don't know what K is, it didn't make say, so I'm just gonna say K is 10. <laughs> uh, and then D, um, let's just say, oh, five, because, you know, five is easy. So five times five squared is, I think it's 125. Uh, if I'm gonna make up numbers, I should like, you know, five times five, or five cubed, I guess, yeah, 125. Okay, so it says now it's two times that distance or displacement, so one half, there's that K I made up. Uh, so two times displacement is 10 squared, and that it be, ends up being, okay, half of 10 is five, 10 squared is 100, so that's gonna be 500. I hope that's four times as much. Oh, it is, and I could tell that because if I take 500 divided by 125, I guess I don't have to be as mysterious here. Um, oh, that's off. There we go. 
It's four times as much. My world is tilting. All right. So that's how that's that's the second way to do it. All right. If you're if you're just not sure, and it didn't take me that long. Like, what did it take me like 35 seconds to to make up a couple numbers and plug it into the equation twice? Um, so that's another way to do it. So that's that's always a valid strategy. Okay, it it it's a valid strategy. Strategy. It's there's nothing wrong with that. Um, plugging it in. Okay. And the third way to do it, I guess, would be to say this is very very similar to the kinetic energy equation, uh, one half m v squared, and be like, yeah, I kind of memorized that. Whatever happens to velocity, you know, you, you square that, and it's like you, you're, I don't know, you just however the connections are made in your brain. There's a few ways to do it. So I don't know. When in doubt, plugging in numbers is the slow and sure way to do it. Okay, but there you go. Ah, graphs. Okay, actually, graphs aren't too bad based on what I saw, uh, how you guys did in the quiz and on the cahoots and stuff like that. But then again, you're gonna be about you're gonna be taking this test by yourself. So a kid sleds down a frictionless hill. All right, frictionless hill is a fancy, not a fancy, but that is like the way that I that we say. Um, no external work is going to happen. It, like there's no energy change to heat is basically what's happening. It's um, it's like a perfect ideal world. Which of the following graphs represents the energy of the kid when he is at the top? So the kid is at the top of a hill. Okay, so he's on the sled. He's like sitting down and wow, I do that amazingly well. Uh, so the kid's at the top of the hill. <laughs> oh, okay, you caught it. See, that's the thing. You... Leave that there. I mean, please. Because really, we all have these thought processes that sometimes goes down the wrong path. And then like, you just kind of like, okay, take a look at it. Did I do the right thing? And it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. And you back up a little bit and then you go down the other path. It happens to all of us. So don't ever be ashamed of that happening. It, it, it is what it is, right? So, yeah. So when he's at the top, it is going to be A because it's all gravitational potential energy at the top. This is total, which is why it's the same in everything. And it always adds up to be, or it's always the sum of whatever energies are there. It should be. I guess I didn't double check that. But ideally, it's not ideal. It should add up to all what the, the, you know, the other energies that are there. So, right, he's at the top of the hill. It's just gravitational potential energy. All right. Hey, we slipped into 5.3. There wasn't even like a bumper there to say, are there any questions about 5.2? My side show is all jacked up. Okay, well, we'll continue on. I'll answer questions as we come. <laughs> all right, we, we got the same kid. Frictionless hill. Which of the following graphs represents the energy of the kid when he's at the bottom of the hill? Bottom of the hill. Okay, now what's going on at the bottom of the hill? Let's see if I can redraw that. So the kid at the bottom of the hill, ideally, oh, well now he's standing because I've whoa, he's, it looks like he's going backwards too. Uh, he is flying. He is. He just came off the hill, and he is moving. All right. So those little lines represent the fact that he's moving. Okay. He's also at the bottom of the hill, and so it's like there's the ground level. There is H is zero. The height is zero. Um, that is supposed to be an equal sign. All right, so the height is zero, which means that all that potential energy has gone gone away. So like all that potential energy that the kid had earlier is gone. What happened to it? He's off the hill. Obviously, I'm over explaining this and you already know the answer, but the answer is, yeah, it's D. It, it turned all into potential energy. So all that kinetic, all that potential energy turned into kinetic energy, all of it, okay? So there you go. He's surfing down the hill, standing up. I guess he's, well, he's snowboarding. I guess that's a thing. All right. All of it. Okay. Now, those are the two simple parts. You, like, I think everybody's got those. It's like, all right, top of the hill, it's all potential. At the bottom of the hill, he's moving fast. It's all kinetic. Okay, cool. It's these middle parts that just like, grr. So, which of the following graphs represents the energy when he's more than halfway down the hill? Okay. That means that more than halfway down the hill means that he has spent more than half of his potential energy. So it cannot be this one. 
Okay. Uh, okay, this one is half. So it can't be that one. It's got to be more than half. All right, it's half and half right there. Um, it's not this one because he's still on the hill, although it says more than halfway down the hill. That can be viewed as he's all the way at the bottom, but let's just, he's still on the hill. Okay, he's still on the hill. Still <laughs> on the hill. These questions make a lot more sense in my head when I first think of them. He's still on the hill. Uh, this one for letter E, it looks like he's more than halfway up the hill. So if I were to draw like a little version of this, it looks like the kid would be like up here, um, more than halfway up. Mm, let's see, let's see. So I guess that's gonna be this one. Yeah, it's gonna be B. Uh, so what's going on here is he is, the kid is, draw my little hill again. And maybe he's moving like this over here. He just have, have one little line because he's not going very fast yet. So he's more than halfway down the hill. He's got some potential energy left over. He's still on the hill, but he is moving a lot. And, and those two add up to be the total still. The total doesn't change. I don't know if you noticed, the total is just hanging out there being like, yeah, I'm the sum of you guys. But, okay, what's going on here? The, this graph looks different. Yes, look at, okay, so this is the this one I was just talking about. This is total mechanical energy, purple. Okay, confusingly, uh, purple is this waxed thing. I'll explain that in a moment. All right, so, but that is different, right? So I went from purple being total mechanical energy to this purple being work, it's work, external work is what it ends up being, waxed, external work. But I'll explain that now. So a kid slides down a hill. There is some friction. Okay, so that is the big deal here. That is the big difference between this one and the previous one, friction. So that is gonna be negative work okay negative work that's a negative sign not 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 just a little bullet point so you know now it looks like a bullet point so let me just fix that bloop uh so negative work in other words energy is being taken out of the system okay that's what's going on there's some friction that's what it does but she has fun and is going pretty fast at the bottom which of the following graphs best represents the energy of the kid so this is a lot like that matchbox car that you guys played with that that you guys did the, the the lab on on Friday, right? It started out with some energy at the top, but it didn't have all the same, it lost a lot of energy going down the hill uh, because of the friction. So which one best represents the energy of the kid? All right, so this wexed is, where should I write this? Um, wexed is external work. Okay, in other words, there is some external force, AKA friction, that is taking energy out of the system. So, how do we represent that? Okay, well, it's not gonna be A. Think about that, what is wrong with A? And actually, C has the same problem. Why won't it be either one of those? In fact, let me just clearly, X that out. And the answer is, and I got the delay, so I'm not seeing if you're, if anybody's actually typing it in, but what's wrong with it is that this is positive work, okay? In other words, it's, according to this graph, energy is actually being added to the system, okay? So it looks like one, two, three, four, five bars plus one, two, so we'd be up to seven bars, and so one, two, three, four, five. So this doesn't even make sense. That, that's bad, like a bad graph. So five plus, so seven again. That was a bad graph too. Wait, is it the same graph? No, it's different. Okay, so that can't be it. It's gonna be one of these because uh, both of those is negative. In other words, it's removing energy. That's what negative work is, work, is either adding energy or taking away energy. It's changing the energy. W equals delta E. And so if there's friction, that's taking away energy, which means it has to be negative, all right? So which one is it? Well, she's at the, she, these are a little weird, like they're, they're sort of, bar graphs are kind of funny. It kind of like, they're never perfect. But the bottom line is, what did she start with? She started with the potential energy. 
she ended up with kinetic energy, and that's important. This one, she ended up at the end, the final, she ended up with some gravitational potential energy. That doesn't make sense. She's at the, where to say, she's going pretty fast, at the bottom. Okay, if she's at the bottom, then it all needs to be kinetic energy. So these graphs are telling the story, and the one that tells the story the best is letter D, okay? So to recap the story, she starts out with some potential energy. Uh, there is some friction that's taking away some of that energy. And as you saw with the, mm, your mouse, uh, no, mouse trap, <laughs> your matchbox car, it takes out a lot of energy sometimes, all right? And in this case, yeah, she's going from five, she loses two, two, yeah. And so she's down to just three kinetic energy. I mean, whatever the units are. Um, oh, I guess it says joules, doesn't it? So the point is though, the story has to make sense, okay? Once you get used to it, I mean, like anything, of course, it's kind of silly for me to even say this, but once you get used to it, it's, it's not that tough. Uh, but like I said, that sentence is meaningless. I wish I hadn't said it because <laughs> learning it is the hard part. But let me know if you got questions. We still have another extra day to, to get ready for this stuff. All right. A few more. 54 kilogram kid is on a 10 meter hill that has 5,300 joules of potential energy. It doesn't specify gravity. Potential energy and 700 joules of kinetic energy. What is the kid's total mechanical energy? All right, here is where we are getting into the realm of these types of questions. Uh, from the review guide and it like well not that one but the, these types of energies or qu energy related questions where it's like you, you get this whole like progression of questions like what is the elastic energy what's the gravitational what's the total and it's it's all the same basic thought process of of that um, and so like you're gonna see the next one for example the next uh, slide I have is like, it's gonna be asking the same situation, um, but like another, like, there's a lot of things to ask about. What's the gravitational, what's the kinetic, what's the potential, uh, or what's the kinetic? What are the different kinds of energies? Uh, and then what is the height, what is the speed, all those kinds of things. So um, let's just take a look at this specific one. What is the kid's total mechanical energy? All right, so total mechanical energy. It's exactly what it sounds like. And just in case you forget that for some reason, um, total mechanical energy is on the equation sheet. <laughs> and it's right there, the sum of all the energies. That's basically what it comes down to, all right? So it's on the equation sheet for you, again, in case you just have one of those moments. Um, all right, so what is it? These things don't matter. Uh, who cares? It tells you. they've that this kid has five that and it's got this much of kinetic energy, right? All you gotta do is add them together. So um, sometimes, I would put this um, E, so sometimes it's called ME, sometimes it's called TME, total mechanical energy. Uh, in this case, I'm, I'll write it all out. So it's gonna be potential energy, whether it's elastic potential, all the potential energies, plus the kinetic energy. And so it's 5,300 joules plus 700 joules, which means that the total mechanical energy is 6,000 joules, which means that it is gonna be choice C. Okay, that one, I don't think I'm too worried about. I don't think you're probably not too worried about those kinds either. This one, it's so ridiculously easy but I can I get concerned because we do all like to overthink things, okay? Um, but again, it's asking what the kid's total mechanical energy is when he's halfway down. And the trick is, it doesn't change. Okay, so the answer is going to be six thousand joules again. That is like the key of this whole exercise when with with i mean that's the name of this part of the unit conservation of energy conservation of energy means it doesn't change or like it means the same thing okay so that's the point of conservation of energy it doesn't change so let me see what the next question is before i yeah okay what's the kid's potential mechanical energy at the top 
What's the kid's potential energy, total mechanical energy when he's halfway down the hill? What's the kid? And then the next question, what is, it says at the bottom of the hill, what is the kid's total mechanical energy? I hope that's a good wowzers. It's going to be 6,000 again because it does not change. TME. Total mechanical energy does not change. Okay. So the sum of potential and kinetic does not change. If you can remember that, that makes everything else so much easier, right? Now we're getting near a question. This is the this is the question basically that like uh, that one of you asked about uh, 18D. What is the speed of the car when it's five? Okay, kind of, sort of, five meters from the bottom. Um, I, I'll, I might actually have to get into that one a little bit. So just uh, bear with me here. Um, Let's take a look at this because this one's asking at the bottom of the hill. Okay, so what happens is <clears throat> we know that the total mechanical energy is 6,000 joules. Okay, and total mechanical energy is potential plus kinetic, right? We know that the total mechanical energy is 6,000. At the bottom of the hill, the potential energy is going to be zero which means that the kinetic energy has to be 6,000 joules, okay? I'll add my, I'll add the units. So we know that the kinetic energy is 6,000, okay? Now, th there's no like steps to this. It's just like, mm, you have to think it through. You gotta think it through. Uh, so that means that we wanna know the kid's speed, all right? So the only equation that even deals with speed in terms of energy is one half mv squared. I'm very curious why you wrote Wowzers, but you don't have to explain now. Um, but it's just kind of like lingering with me. So, so here's the equation that the only one that deals with velocity or speed is this one. And I've gone through it a few times in the class. I'll go through it one more time. This is the review, right? So, okay, I'll go through it one more time. So we need to get v, we need to get v by itself. So what I'm gonna do is um, first I'm gonna multiply by two. Uh, because that's going to cancel out the half, okay? And then whatever I do to one side, I got to do to the other. <laughs> All right, so then I want to get this V by itself, so I'm going to divide by M, and then whatever I do to one side, I got to do to the other, okay? So that's going to cancel that out. And then I've got this V squared, and you have to undo the square, so I'm going to square root that, and whatever I do to one side, I got to do to the other. And so that leaves me with hopefully the familiar looking two times KE over M is equal to V or, you know, flipped around. But you have to take the square root of both of everything on the inside. All right. So how do we do this? So velocity is going to be equal to the square root of two times 6,000 joules divided by the mass. And it says the kid has a mass of 54 kg okay now <clears throat> this is where learning how to put it in your calculator is going to pay off so much all right because if you don't know how to put it into your own calculator or the calculator that you're going to use you're going to run into trouble here because the calculator doesn't know what you intend it to do the calculator only knows what you're telling it to do and different brands and different styles and different uh number whatever ti83 they're, they're all going to be a little bit different and um if you run into questions on the test i, I might be able to help you all right but honestly just getting used to putting this in there yourself is going to be uh your best bet so the slower way to do it is is just piecemeal two times six thousand whoa and it actually helps if you put the correct number in there okay divided by 54, great, cheapers, creepers. All right, let's try that one more time. No, stop doing it. Nope, all right, well, um, let's do that again. All right, 12,000 divided by 54. There we go. Then I take the square root of that. And many calculators are like this where the square root is right above the square button. And so I gotta hit the second square root and then uh, I like to use this thing down here 
ENS to answer. Uh, also, in my case, yellow. Yours might be blue or some other color, which means I had to hit that second button. So second ANS stands for answer. So it's gonna take the square root of the previous answer. I don't need to decide, should I round it to 0.2, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm just gonna do that. It takes the square root. So I know that my answer is 14.9, all right? Um, 14.9, presumably meters per second because the joules and the kilometers, the kilograms are gonna cancel each other out, okay? One other way to do it is use parentheses. Uh, that's actually kind of how I like to do it. Uh, so two times 6,000 again. Um, and just to, let's insert another parenthesis. or is it insert, insert. Because what I want to do is use parentheses to make sure that the two times 6,000 gets done first and then divide it by the 54 and optional and the parentheses. So it's going to take um, the square root of everything inside the parentheses. All right, so that's one other way to do it. It's just a little bit quicker. Well, the more you use your calculator, get, the more you get used to doing kind of stuff like that. Uh, so 14.9, whoop, that's gonna be my answer. Okay, letter E is a lie. We do know KE, it's right there. All right, so don't let that fool you. So that's how you find speed. All right, I'll come back to a question again. Is this like, yeah. Let me mm, throw in question. Let me, let me talk about this one. Five meters from the bottom. I'm gonna need a little bit more information here. I'll go through it kind of quickly though. So um, I gotta make a new slide though. So bear with me here. Do, do, do. All right, I'm doing this live. All right, 18D. Let's go back to that slide that I just made specifically for this. Actually, it's the next slide. Hey, look at that. I am like a, <laughs> it's so boring when I, I make a major change in the middle of the stream. I apologize about that, but that's the whole point, right? Is that you ask me questions. So when it's five, so this is 18D from the review guide. All right, 18D from the review guide. Uh, the speed of the car when it's five meters from the bottom of the hill. So I don't remember what A, B, and C were asking you about, but um, it says, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out the total mechanical energy here. So the total mechanical energy is the sum of all those things. So I'm going to do, it's at rest. So I know potential energy is gonna, or kinetic energy is gonna be zero. Um, and so I'm going to take the, um, in this case, it's just going to be PEG, which is MGH. And so I'm going to take the mass of 200 kilograms times gravity, uh, meters per second squared, times the height, which is 15 meters. And so the total mechanical energy, which is only um, PEG, because it's at rest, is 29400 joules. And if I get that wrong, you better call me out on that like ASAP because the rest of this is gonna follow from that. And I'm thinking it's one of those questions, A, B, or C probably asked you that. Okay, so you know that it always has to add up to this. Everything, so equals, just to make sure we know this, PEG plus kinetic energy, all right? So we gotta remember that, that at all times that is gonna be true. So when we talk about the, the, the car being five meters from the bottom, that means its height is currently five meters. So just to kind of set this up, a long way around it is this 29,400 joules has to equal the PEG, which is gonna be MGH plus the kinetic energy. Um, Okay, so why is that important? Uh, well, if we figure out MGH, so 29, I don't remember that. Did the previous question ask you the height or how much energy it has at that point? Let's go back and find out. No, it doesn't, okay, that's okay. Um, so you just gotta kind of do this, it's fine. It, like the different questions ask it a different way. So let's see, 29,000 joules is the mass, so 200. 
uh, kilograms times gravity, 9.8 seconds squared, times the height, which is now five meters, plus the kinetic energy. Okay, so I'm gonna plug those numbers in, and so 200 times 9.8 times five gives me 9,800. So 29,400 joules is equal to, yeah. Let me just be, I want to be clear here, uh, 9800 zero, zero. Um, joules plus the kinetic energy, which means that if I subtract this from both sides, 9800, zero, zero, 9800, zero, zero, that means the kinetic energy is 29400 zero, zero, minus my answer. Um, one nine six zero zero joules is the kinetic energy. Okay. In short, to summarize what I just did, <clears throat> I know that the total energy has to equal twenty nine thousand four hundred joules. I know at five meters from the bottom, it's going to have nine thousand eight hundred joules of potential energy, meaning that in order to add up to 29,400, the kinetic energy has to be 19,600. There are many ways to get to this point. I did one way, okay? You do it, with, there, there's a lot of different ways. There's not one way to do this. But basically, what you, what you do is you figure out how much the, the total mechanical energy is, you figure out how much mm, gravitational energy it has at that point, and then you subtract it to find the mechanical energy or the kinetic energy. So now that I have the kinetic energy, I could plug it into that formula from before where velocity is equal to two times the kinetic energy, 19600, divided by the mass, 200 kilograms. Okay, and that'll give me my answer. All right, I'm not gonna do it right now because I don't wanna take away all the fun, but that's how you do it. All right. All right. Cool. So hopefully that answered your question. If you got any more, let me know. My phone turned off again, so I'm not seeing if there's any questions. All right. All right. Now, a couple more. In case you missed it that day, I'm, I rolled a bunch of marbles. No, I rolled a marble down a bunch of ramps. And the question is, if we have zero friction or very low friction, uh, which frictionless ramp will give the ball the greatest speed at the bottom? And hopefully you remember this. Okay, cool. Hopefully you remember this. Um, they're all gonna be the same. Yeah, it's D. Why? It doesn't matter the path that it takes. The fact is it's the same marble, so it's gonna have the same um, marble. Could stand for, M could stand for marble or mass, but I'm intending it to be the mass. It's gonna, you know what, let's just kind of be clear on that. So same mass, it's gonna have the same starting height. And so therefore, same starting uh, PEG. Therefore, at the bottom, um, <laughs> this little symbol means therefore, um, I don't remember where I learned that, but that means therefore. So I'm gonna write that out, therefore. Some geometry teacher is very proud of me for remembering that uh, at some point or another. Therefore, it's got the same uh, kinetic energy at the end. Therefore, it has the same velocity. Okay, don't worry, I'm not gonna quiz you on those little three dots, that's just me being lazy. And actually remembering something I was taught a long time ago. Okay, so that's the keys there, that is the key though, those three points, those three lines. The marbles have the same starting potential energy, therefore they're gonna have the same kinetic energy at the, at the bottom, at the end, and since they have the same kinetic energy, they're gonna have the same velocity, all right? Got it. 
Last question. Yep. Last question. What is the minimum distance required to push a 12 kilogram ball with 175 newtons of force so that it rolls up to the top of a 2.2 meter hill? Assume no friction. Oh, good, because that makes things difficult. Um, what? Okay. So how do we figure this out? Uh, we're given the force. All right. In fact, it might not be a bad idea to start listing everything. Force is one just to kind of like lay things out. Uh, we've got the height, 2.2 meters. We've got the mass. And we need to know the minimum distance. All right. We definitely have a lot of things going on here. Um, so how do we do this? Well, it looks like we've got a couple equations to work with. We've got F and D. We've got H and M, which means we're going to have to deal with gravity, 9.8. Okay. So we listed it all out. So let's think this through a little bit. It needs a certain amount of PEG all right, at the top. How much? I don't know. How do you get PEG? How do you get energy? How do you, how do you get energy? The ball's at the bottom. It doesn't have any energy. How does it get energy? <gasps> Wait a minute. There was that one word we learned a long, 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 long time ago back in January. How do you get energy? You got to do work. Work is equal to the change in energy. Okay. Well, this is starting to kind of come together because we've got F and we've got displacement and we're going to have to figure out displacement. So work is equal to force times displacement, if we remember that. Okay, it's also equal to the change in energy. Okay, well, the distance is what we're trying to find. We know the force. We just need to figure out the change in the energy. What's going to be the change in energy? Well, the change in the energy is going from zero PEG to some amount of PEG. So if we can figure out the PEG, that'll, fig that'll tell us how much the energy changed. So PEG is MGH, okay? You might be like, yeah, I'm just gonna guess on this question. Don't just guess on a question, you can do this. You're gonna, have, you're gonna have time to do this. I mean, here's what you can do. If you get a question like this, you can flag it and then come back to it but don't guess on it unless you absolutely have to, you know, and then show as much work as you can. List the variables. This right there, if it's like a FRQ, that's gonna be like partial credit, okay? So do something with it. Do something with it. Anyway, I, was, uh, I got diverted here. So mass, we got 12 kilograms. Gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, and then the height, so this is coming together, 2.2 meters and so <clears throat> 12 times 9.8 times 2.2 uh <laughs> drop my calculator because of gravity um two five eight point seven two joules so 258.72 joules is my peg okay well now i know that that's going to be this right here so the amount of work is also going to be the amount of work so if work is force times displacement and i need to find displacement so i just divide by by f divide that by f that cancel out so that's going to be work divided by force um and i know that work the amount of work done is two five eight because that's how much energy it gained so that's how much work was done the amount of force is 175 point, no, just 175 newtons. No, no, no point there. I mean, there is, but you know, we don't usually write it. So that means that the displacement, the distance is gonna be 175, 258.72 divided by 175. I got 1.478 four probably meters and one point there we go so it's gonna be a okay um what did i just do what who what um well let me um let me just kind of recap what i did because that was kind of complicated um it wants to know the distance okay uh and so 
and it tells you there's a force. That kind of is our clue that we're gonna to have to use the uh, W equals FD equation. Uh, and we know the force and we know the amount of, well, we don't know the distance. We, we do know the force, we don't know the work. How much is the work? Well, the work is gonna be however much energy it gains. Okay, how much energy did it gain? Well, it's gonna gain potential energy, gravity. And so we do the mass times gravity times height to figure out how much energy it just gained. How much, how did it gain this energy? Work had to be done to it. And so work is force times displacement. We solve for displacement, and then we put our numbers in and got the answer. All right, short answer to a kind of a thought process that just, yeah. All right, well, hey, this explains why that said five point, just unit five. So are there any questions? Hey, 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 uh, chill out, man. What? All right. Um, we'll do it this way then. Are there any questions about, okay, here we go, sorry. Oh, it's from before, that's why. Are there any questions? I'll just leave it at that. Cause that's all I've got. This is actually just unit five. All right, so we'll review a little bit. <laughs> Excuse me. We will review a little bit tomorrow. Um, and hopefully this was helpful. That's why I do these. If these ever are not helpful, I'm going to stop doing it because, mm, you know, there's other things that I could do on Sunday nights. But I really, 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 really want to help you do well on this. So, all right. Well, if you don't have any uh, questions for me, then I am going to stop the stream and just send me messages through your mind or whatever, and I'll get back to you when I can get back to you, all right? You got this, just go through the review guide, work through it, don't take the short, don't try to find any new shortcuts, you, you gotta do the work in order to get better, okay? It's like, uh, it's like a sport, it's like a musical instrument, it's like drawing, it's like art, it's like anything. If, to get good at it, it takes work, all right? And practice, and you, do, you can do it, I know you can, all right? Well, have a good evening. I'll see you all tomorrow.